Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to dip back into one of my favorite periods in history, the Meiji Restoration Era of Japan. The Meiji Restoration is a fascinating look into the window of clashing values and resistance to change, and from it we have seen true acts of heroism and treachery all at the same time. Today, we're going to be taking a look into someone who played an integral role in the Meiji Restoration itself on the side of Emperor Meiji. Today we talk about the man of many names, Takasugi Shinsaku. Takasugi was born in Hagi in Choshu, which is now the Yamaguchi Prefecture, as the first son of a well-off samurai family. Family. He was a diligent student and as a result was accepted into the school of Yoshida Shoin, a master intellectual of the time. To understand Takasugi, it's important to know some things about Yoshida. Yoshida himself served to influence several key figures into siding with Emperor Meiji during the Meiji Restoration, often teaching of the benefits that came from learning not only the classical knowledge of Japan, but to study Western knowledge as well. Yoshida himself would study Western military tactics, which would have a major influence on him. Yoshida had a fascination with the West and even attempted to sneak aboard Commodore Perry's ship after Japan denied sending envoys to the US but was captured and detained by the Tokugawa shogunate. He had been running a famous academy where he taught his values, and even after being detained, students still came to visit him to hear his lectures, preaching of the potential of learning from the West. Takasugi Shinsaku himself was one such student. Takasugi would listen to his teachings until Yoshida was executed in 1859. While his family was certainly happy that their son had been educated, they feared for his future, and as such, arranged a marriage for him with a family friend's daughter in 1860 in hopes of putting him onto a different path in life. However, just a year later, Takasugi would depart to join a naval training program in Edo. Later that same year, he would travel to Japan studying the ideologies of various other scholars. During this time, Takasugi would be a strong advocate for Japan to remain isolationist, and as such was sent to Shanghai, China, to view how westernization had impacted. What he saw was that western imperialism had had a significant influence over the Chinese and returned to Japan with a message that Japan needed to strengthen itself in order to avoid meeting a similar fate. One such way that he devised to do this was to create a new form of military. During the rule of the Tokugawa shogunate, only the samurai class was allowed to take up arms for military purposes. Takasugi determined that a military consisting of the farmer and merchant classes, both of whom held middle class wealth, could be trained to take up arms if necessary, akin to a well-trained militia. This became known as the Shotai, and Takasugi himself would form a personal militia called the Kiheitai. Naturally, this change did not sit well with more conservative groups who wanted to keep the social order as it was, and having people of a lower status take up arms that was traditionally done by people of the high class samurai was seen as overstepping one's bounds. Thus, some of these parties would attempt to have him assassinated. During these times while hiding out, he would enter into a relationship with a woman named O Uno, who would become his mistress until the time of his death. In 1863, in an attempt to get western ships away from their waters, the ports of Choshu fired fired at them. This resulted in immediate backlash from the west, who then attempted to level the port city of Shimonoseki, in what would become known as the Shimonoseki Bombardment. Takasugi was put in charge of the defense of the city during this time. Naturally, this attack on foreign vessels angered people who had supported opening Japan to the west and an anti-Choshu movement was formed. This led to a string of conflicts involving Takasugi and the Kiheitai, which eventually led to his removal from the group after a botched fight resulted in the deaths of two men and the forced seppuku of one of his instructors. Takasugi would then attempt to flee to Kyoto, but was found and brought back and detained for fleeing his domain. This detention would ultimately result in a house arrest. In September of 1864, Shimonoseki was attacked again by Western vessels, and this time was actually invaded by a landing party of the French Marines. The French rampaged essentially unhindered through the city due to the superior technology and strategy, highlighting the weaknesses and antiquated nature of the current Japanese military. This seemed to terrify Takasugi. What he had seen happen in China was now happening in his home, and he went to the leaders of Choshu and pleaded that they perform some form of military reform. What came of this was Choshu forgiving Takasugi of his previous crimes and appointing him to become the head of the peace negotiations with the four western countries that were attacking them. These countries were the French, Dutch, British, and Americans. Takasugi, at the age of only 25, saw this as an opportunity. It had become abundantly clear that a direct assault on Western forces would never work. So instead, he would put to use what he had learned from Yoshida, and begin to embrace and attempt to learn the military strategy and technologies that the West had in hopes of using them to bolster the Japanese military. This is when Takasugi came to a realization. Takasugi Shinsaku was a member of the Sono Joy, a group that I've talked about in the past whose ultimate goal was to expel foreigners from Japan and revere the emperor who at the time was Emperor Meiji. It was the Tokugawa Bakfu who had allowed foreigners into Japan. As such, the fastest way to expel the foreigners from Japan was to remove the largest obstacle in the way of that the Tokugawa. Now viewed as being weak by much of Japan for giving into the demands of foreigners, the Sono Joy movement to reinstate the emperor was gaining more traction, and Takasugi was at the forefront of this. He took back control of his Kiheitai group, and began teaching western war strategy and arming them with much more advanced western rifles. There was one issue with Takasugi's plan, however. Choshu had made attempts to take Kyoto for itself in the past and failed, and after the most recent bombardment and invasion, they were incredibly vulnerable. Thus, the Tokugawa decided to do something about them while they were weakened, and sent a campaign to Choshu 
Choshu to weaken them further. This wasn't helped by there being a very pro-Tokugawa conservative sentiment throughout the Choshu politics. This would eventually lead to Takasugi and other political sympathizers of his having to flee Choshu altogether, which gave them time to plot a revolt, which would eventually evolve into a civil war. Takasugi's forces, trained in Western military strategy and better armed, bested the conservative samurai forces of the Tokugawa. These successes gave Takasugi wide acclaim and he became the go-to person for Western military sciences for a time, and spent much of his time and resources acquiring Western armaments and revising new strategies. With this new form of military superiority, he was able to repel the Tokugawa forces away from Choshu on four different fronts. Effectively, Takasugi Shinsaku had converted Choshu into a modern-day Sparta, with military might able to hit well above its weight class because they were better armed and better trained. Because of these strings of constant victories over the Tokugawa forces, people began to lose faith in the Tokugawa's ability to rule Japan, which continued as a domino effect leading to the shogunate dissolving and the reinstating of Emperor Meiji, thus fulfilling the first part of Takasugi's plan. Takasugi, however, would not be there to see this happen. Takasugi had tuberculosis, which in October of 1866 flared up heavily and he became bedridden, where he was cared for by his mistress Ouno. He would succumb to his tuberculosis on the 17th of May 1867. Only a year later, the Tokugawa shogunate collapsed, the fruits of his work fulfilled, though the second part of his plan of expelling the barbarians would never come to fruition. Thus was the life of Takasugi Shinsaku. He is remembered today as being one of the people who wrenched open the door of modernization to Japan. Had it not been for his efforts in showing the importance of adapting and learning new strategies, the future of Japan becomes significantly more unclear. Had he not paved the road for modernization of the military, it is very likely that another country who decided to modernize would have swept in and simply taken Japan for itself. Today, he is most famous in the town of his birth, Hagi, but is still remembered nationally as a key figure in the Meiji Restoration. If he could accomplish all of this by the age of 27 or 28, you have the potential to do something revolutionary with your life as well. But that's it, Takasugi Shinsaku in the books. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. If there is someone who you want me to cover in the future, please let me know down there as well. Like the video if you found any of this interesting. Subscribe to keep up to date with all the things I'm doing on the channel. Check the links down below for the Discord, Twitch, and Twitter. But for now guys, keep your chin up. Peace.